Hello, welcome back to the Grisman. And if it's your first time, thanks for joining us. Today I will be continuing my adventures with creams, cream appreciation week, I'm calling it. Uh, today I'm using Bevel. This is one that I've used before uh, and I really like. Um, a lot of the creams, the one I used yesterday or the last video was palm olive, which I had not used. But this one, you can check out the ingredients list on there. It's quite extensive. I think a lot of people associate creams with uh, ease of lathering, which is 100% accurate. And, but they also associate it with um, lesser performance than soaps. And I think in the majority of cases, that's true. Creams are gonna be cheaper, they're easier to use, but they don't, they're not as good as far as skincare is concerned. Um, they're not gonna leave your face feeling as nice and smooth than a lot of your artisan shave soaps. Um, there's also a price difference there. I mean, you're talking about a $5 cream versus a $25 tub of soap. But this cream, the bevel cream, this is the two ounce size. I think they sell them at my local Target in the, uh, it's either a four or a five ounce um, tube. It's exactly the same, it's just a little bit larger. Um, I think it's seven bucks for the larger tube, which is a, a quite a good price. And this lather is like artisan level good. Like this, the, the ingredients list, if you saw it on there, I mean, it's just chock full of plant extracts, lavender extract, almond extract, clover, lavender, lemon peel, aloe, shea butter, marshmallow root extract, oat kernel extract, calendula extract, white tea extract. Like there's a ton of really good ingredients that you'll see mirrored uh, on a lot of artisan shea soaps in here. I mean, they did, obviously the, the whole point of Bevel was to help people with ingrown hairs. Um, their marketing is kind of geared towards um, towards black people um, that are historically have more issues with ingrown hairs due to their hair type, like the, having a very curly hair. Um, but it's not limited to black people. I have issues with, with ingrown hairs. Um, my hair is, is fairly curly, obviously it's not as curly as you get, there's different types of um, hair types. Uh, they have, I think it's graded like type one, two, three, four, five for um, the type of curliness of your hair. Uh, my beard obviously is curly, but not super, super curly, but it, this has led to ingrown hairs, the, the curliness of my hair, where the, the hair follicle when it's grown will curl back in under your skin and it'll keep growing, but it'll grow underneath your top layer of your skin and that gets infected and then you have to like pick it out. And uh, usually I get them on my neck, but I've had them on my cheeks before. Um, but I found just like with the, the Bevel brand, using a safety razor really helped with uh, the ingrown hairs. But they built their shave cream around that too to help with skin care. Um, to help reduce ingrown hairs and make your skin softer and, and easier to use. And I think they did a really, really good job. Uh, razor, Yates, each plate. Uh, I just got this recently. I think I've used it maybe twice. Once for sure. Uh, I think I use it twice. And I got it on the recommendation of Fayez, who was wowed. I think he did a review of it not too long ago. And he was wowed, like, instantly up to, like, in his top five, top three, I think he said, razors. Um, I think he said he knocked a blackbird out. So I was super intrigued. So I went out and got the head, the base plate, and the top cap. I think it was $93 shipped uh, and the bead blasted. I'm using a Razor Rock halo handle on there, uh, stainless steel. Uh, I was gonna use my timeless handle. That was my intent when I bought it, was to use my timeless barber pole handle. I don't know where I have it at right now. Um, but it didn't fit the the way the base plate works. There's those grooves, that channel. It just wasn't wide enough to accommodate the, um, the timeless handle. It was just a little bit too narrow for the timeless handle to fit in there. The screw is the same, it's just the channel didn't allow it. Uh, so far, the handles that I own, that I've tried on here, the only one I got to fit was the Razor Rock handles. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that in the future. I might buy another handle. Maybe I'll just go back and buy the Yates handle. I just wasn't super impressed when I was looking at it as far as the design. I have a Rapira super stainless blade in here. I think it's, it's either second or third use. So far it's going good. If it gets kind of crummy, I'll just swap it out.
I really, my first experience with those Yates was just like Fiesz's. It was shockingly good. And I think the other reason why it was shocking was that I hadn't really heard much about the Yates. I mean, I knew they existed. I've heard of Yates Precision Razors and I heard they made a good razor, but I don't, I feel like I don't see them show up on like Shave of the Day posts that often. I don't see a lot of conversations about them. And it might just be that I missed them or overlooked them. But I felt like it's, after using it, I felt like it was this really, like, best kept secret kind of a thing. I'm like, how is this razor so good? And I really didn't know anything about it. It just wasn't on my radar at all. Now the H plate's a little, that's a high plate, right? There's medium high, there's an EH extra high, or maybe it's heavy, extra heavy. I haven't tried the EH, Fiaz has, he says he likes it, um, but he felt they're pretty similar in efficiency. Um, but I think he said there's more blade fill on the EH, which makes sense. There is some blade fill on, the, on this H plate, but not a lot. If you're comparing it to, the, like, say, the Blackbird, significantly less blade fill than the Blackbird, which I find to be very, very blade forward. I have one, a Blackbird. I don't use it very often. I've actually had three now where I kept buying them and trading them off. Uh, and I recently traded for another one to try. Because I hear so many good things. I want to like the Blackbird. I really do, but I haven't really narrowed it. I haven't really mastered it yet. But this one did not give me the kind of problems that the Blackbird did with that. A lot of blade fill and a very narrow kind of window to use it. A very narrow blade angle. <clears throat> the brush I'm using, this is nothing special. This is a Surrey standard run of the mill bore brush. Um, it's nice though. I got it uh, from a gentleman in Minnesota. I bought a bunch of vintage stuff from him like a year and a half ago. It was a while ago. Um, when I was pretty new into wet shaving and I was surfing Facebook looking for stuff. And this guy had a bunch of old shaving stuff in his garage. And it was dirty, covered in like, you know, garage dust and grease and whatnot. And there's a bunch of razors like a Fat Boy and a Super Speed and. I think a new, there's like five or six razors. I think I, I got like three straight razors out of it. Two or three brushes, but put, they were like cracked. The handles were really bad. This is the only one that was salvageable. Bunch of new old stock blades. I had a bunch of hair, like a whole shaving mug full of new old stock hair shaper blades for like a, a WEC hair shaper, but no hair shaper razor, which I thought was mildly amusing. But this brush was in there and it was a board. I'd never used a board before. And when I first, I mean, it was really dirty, so I cleaned it. But in, after I cleaned it, it was in really good shape. Like, there was nothing wrong with the knot. It wasn't falling out. The handle cleaned up really well. It was just this nice, standard cream color. Um, so I thought I'd try it, and I Googled a bunch. And did a, read a bunch about trying to break in a board brush, because I had no idea how to use it. And, I mean, off the start, I think it was pretty much unused. Like, it wasn't broken at all. It had no, like, uh split tips or nothing like that so i went through breaking it my breaking it in myself and you know some people you ask them just like oh just use it if you keep using it and you know a month or two months or three months then it'll be the best brush you ever had and i'm like oh, i don't want to use this like horribly scratchy rough scratchy very stiff brush for three months hoping that it gets better as i use it that seemed horrible because it, as it was it was very pokey it was not nice at all to use I had zero interest in, in continuing to use it as, it as it was. So then I did a lot of YouTube research and read a lot and I did this whole bore break-in process over like three or four days. And I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna video it. I always do a time lapse it. Do it in like chunks and spice it all together at the end. Um, but I'm getting a Samoog Owners Club Cherry wood. Uh, I traded 
Uh, Adam, one of the other groomsmen, got one that he didn't care for. And he tried to break it in, but he said he wasn't very successful with it. And uh, I was gonna buy one anyways, and I happened to mention it in, the, in our little groomsman chat. And he said, oh, I'll trade you mine, because I don't use it. <clears throat> so I traded him for this uh, blue tip that I bought recently from an antique store. So I'll be getting that here shortly. And then I'll do the whole video with how I break in a bore. And I, I mean, it was really successful with this one. Now it's, you know, dry, it's still very stiff and scratchy. It's kind of uh, misleading a little bit, but once you soak it for, you know, no longer than I soak a badger brush, just a couple minutes, um, it's super soft. The tips are very, very soft. It splays really, really well. And this is like bottom of the barrel, cheap bore brush. I think they cost like five bucks or three bucks at the drug stores when they were popular. I think Surrey either name changed into Vanderhagen or they got bought out by Vanderhagen or there was a, a merger. I'm not really sure on the company history there, but it, I know it's now Vanderhagen. But they were Surrey when they were making these brushes. But they were like common, you know, drugstore brushes for a couple bucks. And you can still find them. They're all over eBay. Either used. I see a bunch of them like new, old stock, like in the package still. Well, I mean, look at it. Just, the only like knock on it is a bit of a lather hog. But it holds like an entire lather full worth of lather inside the brush. And that was after I put a bunch on my face, right? But it does like to hold on to the lather. But I've modified for that. Where's that caught that in the air? I might use a little bit more soap than I'm bowl lathering with this brush just because I know it likes to hold a ton inside the, the brush. Or I know that for the last lather, the last I'll squeeze it out and get like a whole face full of lather. I still have a bunch in the bowl. I'm not like at risk of running out or anything. I just wanted to illustrate how much of a bit of a lather hog it is. But it's super soft. There's no, it's, it's a nice scrubby brush. There's no scritch though. I don't have any like stabby, pokey hairs. It, the hairs are all nice and um, bores, when they get broken in, the hairs split. There's like human hairs do, you get split hairs. And that splitting action makes the, the hair fiber much softer. So these ones are all split and broken in and super soft. And it's really fantastic brush. I forgot about it. I had it on a shelf for a long time and then I was looking for something else and found it again and I was like, huh, how did this get put to the back shelf? So I revisited it and then I've used it like, I think probably six times out of the last eight shades I've done, I've used that brush. It's a nice little brush. All right, against the grain with this EH, which is doing fantastic by the way. I think this razor really shines on the against the grain. There are a lot of razors that do really well with the grain and even across the grain. But when they get to the against the grain, you get tugginess and pulling, just not very smooth. If you get any blade chatter, this is usually where you get it because the hair, at least my hair grows down. Yeah, it's fairly close to the skin. It doesn't grow like straight out, which is another reason why I tend to get ingrown hairs. But this one has like no blade chatter that it's held very securely. It's one of those razors machined so well that when you tighten down and you're screwing in the handle, the blade kind of crunches because it's like held in there so tight that there's no margin for error. Even right here in the corner of my mouth is kind of sensitive. And some razors will have a little bit of an issue going against the grain there, but. And this razor is like, it's like a dream. It really is like, I felt like the best kept secret in wet shaving. Like, I don't know how I didn't know about the eights. I know wet shaving is very much into the 
shaving in general, why has always been that way. Historically speaking, it's always about newer is better. But I think uh, a lot of razors, are, I don't think they've made modifications to the Yates in a while. I think it's been out for some time. So I think maybe, and this is just a theory. I think maybe by the time I got into wet shaving, it had already been around and it just kind of got pushed to the back burner because of all the new stuff is getting, you know, advertised and pushed out and black comes out with a new razor and everybody wants it and gets it and then all you see is that for a while or the console comes out and you see the console for for a long time and it kind of steers conversations a certain way so I think maybe I just missed the hype train on the Yates and then because they haven't made any new modifications I just didn't really other than knowing that they existed, I didn't really know anything about them. I certainly had not read any reviews that talked about how amazing they are. Obviously, I'm sure they're out there. But, man, this total sleeper razor, like... <laughs> I've always said the, the Rex has been my number one for efficiency. It's it's kind of a hard razor to use. It's got a very narrow range for me. Um, it's really easy to go overboard and buff into like a lot of razor burn with the direct because it's so efficient. Um, the, the competition between the Yates and the Rex are, is very, very stiff right now. I think the Rex still holds number one just because it's had number one for a while, so it gets like default grading. <laughs> but the more I use the Yates, okay, I feel like I might be bumping the Ambassador out of the top spot here. I mean, it's just, it's so smooth. It's so efficient, like insane BBS, like all day long into the next day. Like the hair growth is, is much less, which is very similar to the Rex. The Rex is like that as well, which is another reason why I like it. It's so, so efficient that you get an all day kind of BBS. But I feel like the Yates gets it with being more forgiving, less blade fill. Like there's some blade fill, but it's not a lot at all. I don't like a lot of blade fill. Which is why I had so many problems with the Blackbird. This razor I've used Right, I can I can buff. I have buffed, I am right now, right, and not gotten any razor burn. I remember the first day I used it, I thought maybe I had buffed myself into a little bit of razor burn, and then I used my aftershave, and there wasn't any any alcohol burn at all. It was a little shocking. working she likes to protect the yard from everybody that walks by Man, this, this razor, I can't get over how nice it feels on my face. Like to use a razor this efficient and to use it in such a carefree way kind of reminds me of the, the Henson in that bag where it's just really, really easy to use, but this is more more efficient than the, the Henson Aggresso. Like, amazingly, amazingly smooth and aggressive. Not aggressive, sorry. Amazingly smooth and efficient. I just, you know, buff it out to my heart's content. And I have, like, no worries about overdoing it. I don't know how you got a blade geometry like that that I can get this close and not 
not get razor burn. I don't get it. I mean, I probably could, right? If I gave it a the old college effort, right? I'm sure if I really tried, I could get myself razor burn. But I feel like, like I can't. Like I'm just gonna buff it out until I get to where I want, as smooth as I want. And it's just my skin feels fantastic. No irritation at all. This is the one razor I used this last week, and I was like shocked. And I didn't really say anything to my wife. And then I came home. And she greeted me when I came home and like, gave me a hug and gave me a kiss. I'm like, she could lean in and give me a kiss and then like a hug and put her face against my face. And then was like, whoa. And she like put her head back and then she felt my face and was like, damn son, like you got a good shave this morning. And I was like, I know, right? Like, and this was at like five in the afternoon, all day long at work. And she was still commenting on how nice and how smooth of a shave I had after like eight hours of growth. It was that good. I can't tote this razor enough. It's so good. I hope to reignite a Yates hype train because Yates deserve it. Their, their manufacturing on this razor is, is top notch. It's fantastic. I'm gonna do a quick uh, cold water rinse and I'll be right back for post shave. All right, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. The Yates, the hype train is real. Definitely check it out if you're interested. I think it was, like I said, 92, 93 shipped uh, in the bevel. The bevel formed perfectly. It was just as good as using an artisan shave soap like the the ingredient list on there again like check it out it's it's really probably the best cream i've used performance wise like it's it's a fantastic cream scent wise it's it's inoffensive it's not anything in particular right there to mask they want everyone to be able to use it so it's kind of a, a light citrus scent that you would find standard with most creams it's nice i like it kind of a lemony citrusy maybe a little grapefruit in there but nothing crazy it's not very highly or heavily scented um just a nice, bright citrus scent, standard. Since it's citrus, I'm gonna follow it up with uh, London, Ariana Evans, The Club, the pinup series. Uh, this is uh, tea and lemon and, um, there's a berry in there too, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Oh, here you go, I got the soap. Earl Grey and Black Currant. There's also a, a nice lemon note on top. I highly recommend the Bevel uh, Shave Cream. I haven't used a razor. I've seen it. It looks very cool. I like the, the top cap design where it makes it really kind of safe to use a double-edged razor for people that haven't used it. Um, but I haven't used it before. It looks interesting. But I like their shave soap. Or their cream, their shave cream. That works really, really well. It's really easily um, available. Uh, I see it here locally where I'm at, at Target. And I think it's like seven bucks, eight bucks. Uh, I think I've seen it at Sally Beauty and Supply. And that's it. Poche was great. Bevel was great. The Yates, the Hype Train. I hope to make a Hype Train. Yates Precision Razors. The H Plate is really tough contender for my number one razor out of all the razors I used. Like, ease of use. Efficiency wise is like unparalleled. It it's amazing. It hits every single checkbox that I've got for a razor. I might go back and buy the Yates handle, I think. I think I want to have the matching handle. But thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. I hope you guys have a good weekend and you enjoyed this Sunday shave. And I hope you have one that's just as good. If you like the video, please hit the like buttons. Uh, we appreciate that. And if you want to get notifications, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate that as well. Uh, share those videos out there. We always appreciate that. If you have anything you'd like to see or any comments, feedback, I certainly appreciate that as well. Hit me up in the comments. I, I check them pretty regularly, regularly, and uh, I know the other groomsmen do as well. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a good weekend.